Hello. My name is Marty Gonzalez. My name is Martha Sadie Griffin. And we'll be performing a scene from King Richard III. Act 4, scene 4. I will be playing King Richard. I'll be playing Queen Elizabeth, uh, wife to Queen, uh, King Edward. And um, what this play is about is King Richard in his um, trying to uh, get whatever he wants in order to become king. So in his quest to do this, he gets rid of people that are in his way, one of whom is uh, Queen Elizabeth. However, in this scene, he must um, try to reason with her in order to um, have her permission to marry her, her daughter so that uh, King Richard could get more popularity as king. And before this, he has executed and conspired in the event, the deaths of my husband, um, my brother-in-law, my brother, and my two infant children. Stay, Madame. I must speak a word with you. I have no more sons of the royal blood for thee to slaughter. As for my daughters, Richard, they shall be praying nuns, not weeping queens. Therefore, level not to hit their lives. You have a daughter called uh, Elizabeth, virtuous and fair royal and gracious. Then must she die for this? <coughs> oh, let her live and I'll, 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 slay, I'll stain her, I'll corrupt her manner, stain her beauty, I'll slander myself as false to Edward's bed, throw over her the veil of infamy to save her from bleeding slaughter. I'll confess she was not Edward's daughter. Wrong not her birth, madame. She is a royal princess. To save her life, I'll say she is not so. Her life is safe is only in her birth. And only in that safety died her brother. <laughs> Lo, at their birth, good stars were opposite. No, to their lives, ill friends were contrary. All unavoided as a doom of destiny. True, when avoided grace makes destiny. My babes were destined to a fairer death, had grace blessed thee with a fairer life. You speak as if though I had slain my cousins. Oh, cousins, indeed, and, and by their uncle cousin of, of comfort, kingdom, kindred, freedom, life. Who had for his hand so lanched their tender hearts, thy head, all indirectly gave direction. No doubt the murderous knife was whetted on thy stone hard heart to revel in the entrails of my lamb. Use of grief makes wild grief tame. My tongue should to thine ears not name my voice till that my nails were anchored in thine eyes, and I in such a desperate bay of death, like a poor bark of sails and tackling wrath, rushed all to pieces on thy rocky bosom. Madame, <clears throat> so bribe I in my enterprise <laughs> and dangerous excess of bloody wars. I do intend more good on you and yours than ever you or yours by me were harmed. What good is covered with the face of heaven to be discovered that can do me good? The advancement of your children, fair lady. Up to some scaffold, there to lose their heads. Unto the dignity and height of fortune, the high imperial type of this earth's glory. Flatter me with report of it. Tell, tell me what state. What honor, what dignity canst thou demise to any child of mine? Being all I have, I, my soul and I, will I withal endow a child of thine. So in the lethe of thy angry soul thou drown the sad remembrance of those wrongs which thou supposest I have done to thee. Be brief, lest the process of thy kindness last longer telling than thy kindness date. Then know that from my heart I love thy daughter. My daughter's mother thinks it with her soul. What do you think? So, so from my soul's love, 
Thou dost love my daughter, but by my soul's love, thou didst love her brothers. And I, and I do thank thee for it. <laughs> Be not so hasty to confound my meaning. I mean to say that I love thy daughter, and do intend to make her queen of England. Say then, who, who does that mean should be her king? Being he who makes her queen, who else should be? What thou? Even so, what thinks what? But how canst thou woo her? That I would learn from you, being one most acquainted with her humors. And thou wilt learn from me? Madame, with all my heart. Send to her by the man that slew her brothers. Pair of bleeding hearts. Thereon engrave Edward and York, and happily she will weep. Th therefore present to her sometimes Margaret did to thy father, steeped in Rutland's blood a handkercher, which say to her did drain the purple sap from her sweet brother's body, and bid her wipe her weeping eyes withal. If this inducement move her not to love, send to her a, a letter of thy noble acts. Tell her how thou madest away her uncle Clarence, her uncle Rivers, and yea, even for her sake, madest quick conveyance with her good aunt Anne. You mock me, madame. This is not the way to win your daughter. There is no other way unless thou could put on some other shape, and be not Richard, who hath done all this. See, I did it all for love of her. <laughs> Nay, that she cannot choose but to hate thee, having bought love with such a bloody spoil. Look! What is done cannot be amended. Men shall deal unadvisedly sometimes, which after hours gives leisure to repent. If I did take the kingdom from your sons to make amends, I'll give it to your daughter. If I have killed the issue of your womb, Quicken your increase, I will beget my issue of your blood upon your daughter. A granddam's name is little less in love than is a doting title of a mother. They are his children, but one step below. Even of your metal, of your very blood, of in one pain, save for a night of groans endured by her for whom you bid like sorrow. Your children were vexations to your youth, but mine shall be a comfort to your age. The loss you have is but a son being king, and by that loss your daughter is made queen. I cannot make you what amends I could, therefore, accept such kindness as I can. What? We have many goodly days to see. The liquid drops that you have shed shall come again, transform to orient pearl, advantaging loan with interest of ten times double gain of happiness. Go then, my mother, to thy daughter go. Make bold her bashful ears with your experience. Prepare her ears to hear a wooer's tale, and when this harm of mine hath chastised it, that petty rebel dull brain Buckingham, bound with triumphant garland shall I come and leave thy daughter to a conqueror's bed, to whom I will retail my conquest won and she shall be sole victress, Caesar's Caesar. What were I best to say to her? That her father's brother shall be her lord, or should I say, her uncle? Or he that slew her brothers and her uncles? Under what title shall I woo her for thee, that God, the law, my honor, and, and her love can make seem pleasing to her tender years? Infer fair England's peace by this alliance. Which she shall purchase with still lasting war. Say the king, which may command entreats. <laughs> that at her hands which the king's king forbids. Say that I will love her everlasting. But how long shall that title ever last? Sweetly enforce unto her fair life's end. But how long sweetly shall her fair life last? So long as heaven and nature lengthens as it. As long as hell and Richard likes of it. Be eloquent on my behalf to her. An honest tale speeds best, being plainly told. Then plainly tell her my loving Plain tale. Plain and not honest is too harsh a style. Your reasons are too shallow and too quick. Oh no, my reasons are too deep and dead. Too deep and dead, poor infants in their grave. Up not that string, madame, that is a pass. Hard upon each shall I till heart springs break. Help by my George, my daughter, and my crown. Profane, dishonored, and the third you swear. I swear! Not nothing, for this is no oath. 
Thy charge, profane, hath lost his lordly honor. Thy garter, blemished, pawned his knightly virtue. Thy crown, usurped, disgraced his kingly glory. If thou wouldst something to be sweared, to be believed, swear then by something that thou hast not wronged. Then by myself. Thyself is self-misused. <laughs> 